Hey guys, Strong Style Series back again. It's Alex. And it's me, Noah. And Justin is on here tonight. Um, we are doing your Bound for Glory 2013 pay-per-view review. Pay-per-view was this past Sunday, and this was the biggest show of the year for TNA. Or so they claim. Something like that. Yeah, it was the biggest something, right, this year. <laughs> um, this show, I would probably say from top to bottom, had a lot of serious booking problems. But yeah, that's an understatement. I mean... <laughs> This might be the most disappointing show this, yeah, of I agree. the year. Yes. All right, well, let's start things off with the match that we were, well, first of all, they had the pre-show where uh, we didn't watch, but uh, Bromance won a gauntlet match to get a tag team title shot later tonight. So, yeah, J Jesse Goddard and Robbie E getting a tag team title shot over instead of a uh, bad influence. Yeah, that means that Christopher Daniels and Kazarian were not booked for this, for the main card. Yep. That was just very disappointing in that. Yeah, I would say so. Um, we started things off with the Ultimate X match between champion Manic defending against Chris Saban, Jeff Hardy, Austin Aries, and Samoa Joe. Um, a lot of people thought going into this was going to be the match of the night. This was going to blow the, the, the roof off the place. It was pretty lackluster. It was de It did not feel like an, X, an Ultimate X. Yeah, they, I mean, they didn't really use the structure at all. Which, let, let, to be fair though, um, I don't know if you remember like back in like 2009, like when they had the Ultimate X, like people were like dying, you know, like people were like crashing and burning and doing stupid stuff. So I'm kind of glad they toned it down. But like, if you're gonna tone it down to this level where you barely use a structure, like why bother doing it anymore? Right. I mean, if your face, the face of the whole match is gonna bring in a ladder, you might as well just make it a ladder match. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I didn't understand that. I uh, when no. when I saw Jeff Hardy grab the ladder. I thought that was a real heel move. I didn't yeah, understand. Yeah, like it would have like He didn't even try to climb it once. Yeah, it would have made so much more sense if Saban was the one that brought the ladder in. But, right. you know. And then Jeff Hardy could have capitalized because he's a ladder. Exactly. Um, they had some good spots in the match, but, like, just, it was very bare bones. It felt like this was, like, to be get, like the first, like, few minutes of a really good Ultimate X match that was going to get going. And right. uh, finish was very stupid with Velvet Sky going in the ring to distract the ref because Saban told her to and he's a heel. And then Saban just kind of like stealing the belt out from everyone's nose. And just, it was kind of like, everyone's kind of like sitting in the ring like, wait, what? Like, yeah, it just felt like, as a fan, you just kind of felt like, uh, that's it. Yeah, it was a very much a that's it moment. But this Now, was, before we, yeah. we get to our ratings, I want to say that I know that I talk a lot about Austin Aries. I'm a big fan of his, yeah. but I got to give him some credit. He worked his ass off in this yeah, match. He, he might have been the only guy that really, really went all out. I, I think so, like, yeah. Um, Hardy really didn't do much in this match, no. although it looked like he might have banged himself up a little bit. I That's fine. Yeah, he did. Um, yeah. Joe did fine. He played his role. Same. I thought Joe did pretty well. Yeah, Manic really didn't do anything either in this match. It felt no, like. I don't know what was up with Manic. I don't know if it, it wasn't the normal guy under the mask Yeah, or what. It, it, because you, you mentioned that it didn't look, it didn't seem like TJ, but like I don't know. He did some of the TJ spots, so whatever. It's hard to say. Um, now, TJ did have a match the night before in PWG, I believe. No, that was this weekend. Was it? Or, no, actually, no, you know, he wasn't both that show. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he okay. wasn't, no. Okay. Right. Um, I'll give this three and a quarter, though. It was, this is probably the, probably, in my opinion, the best match of the night. I'm going to give it three. Okay, that's fair enough. All right, next up we had, oh, well, first we had Bad Influence come out, but cut an awesome promo, having the line of the night, uh, not since Brokeback Mountain has two guys been screwed over more. That was, that was awesome. And then Eric Young came out and uh, talked about, them waking a monster in the pre-show match, which brought out Abyss to a pretty good reaction, but it's just like, is this the way they end the Joseph Park storyline that's been going right. on for how many fucking it, years? Right. Like, this is how you end this yeah. whole thing. Like, we've been waiting to get rid of this Joseph Park character. At least we have. We have. I'm sure some people love it. L listen, it is a funny character, but you're taking, like, arguably the biggest monster ever in the company and making him a joke. Yeah. And this is the, the payoff. I couldn't believe it. When yeah. I saw it, I was just like, this is just terrible. Like yeah. It's just a waste of my time. It's Absolutely. A, it's just a disaster, yeah. if you ask me. Oh, uh, and also basically the fact that just came out there and buried Bad Influence, the best, best tag, the, arguably the best tag team in TNA right now. Right. And so. Bad Influence, to their credit, they came out there and pretty much shot on TNA. Yeah. And, and the thing is, the crowd was cheering them. Yeah. So. And, and deservedly so, because oh, there's no reason they shouldn't have been booked. Absolutely not. No, not, not at all. Mm. So then we got the tag team match between the Bromans defending against the tag team champions Gunner and James Storm 
who have been the champions since like July or June and like have not defended on pay per view once and just like barely seen them been seen on television. Um, this was a pretty good match. Right? This was a pretty good basic tag team match, but it was fun. Yeah, it was basic, but the thing was, and I, th I feel like we've mentioned this before mm -hmm. to each other anyway, yeah. that there wasn't a lot of, there wasn't overbooking. It no, was basically, okay. it was the only time on the whole card where you felt like you just watched a match. Yeah. And it was acceptable. Yeah, exactly. It was fine. Um, Roman looked pretty good, you know, and James Storm looked good. Gunner looked probably the best if he's ever looked. I think he did. You know, um, yeah. He took a bump. Yeah, oh my god, he took a bump, yeah. <laughs> Mr. No Bump. Um, the, bump. Only, the only real problem I had with this match was just the finish was a little weird because, like, James Storm was going for the, the, the super kick. Robbie e threw the title in the ring, so I guess like the whole thing was like he was just, he was getting James from distracted, like like oh wait what's going on over there, and then they took advantage. I didn't like James from taking the pin either. Like he got Gunner, like pin Gunner, not James Storm. Yeah. But yeah, Bromance, your new uh, TNA Tag Team Champions, and uh, they actually cut a funny promo uh, after the match, like in the back, and like they're like doing like a protein shake, you know. Oh, champagne. that was that was funny. funny. I, I laughed. That, that was funny. So I don't expect these guys to be Tag Team Champions long, but like. It could be. It could be good. You know. Yeah. The thing is, though, like when it comes to the bromans, I always felt like you could use these guys to fill out the tag division yeah. and uh, solidify it as a very good division. Mm -hmm. But these guys have no, no business they're, being your champions. They're they're transitional champions. Yeah, and I don't know what they're going to do with Storm from here. No, I, mean, I really don't. Drop, Storm should get a fucking uh, main event run. Singles, push, yeah, yeah, for something. sure. Something. Um, I get this match like two and three quarters. It was pretty fun. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna agree with that. Okay. Um, I think now, yeah, we had this after this, we had the Hall of Fame induction ceremony for Kurt Angle. So JB came out, out came Sting, brought out Kurt Angle, and they cut a very blah long promo. I wasn't really paying attention. Sting talked. Yeah, Sting talked and it was kind of goofy. Um, Angle then said that his recent actions or something like that has proven that he's not worthy of being in the TNA Hall of Fame and declined the induction ceremony. So, since they've announced him at anniversary to be in the next inductee in the Hall of Fame, he waited till the last possible second to say, yeah, I don't think I'm worthy. Yeah. To me, this really basically was TNA burying their own Hall of Fame. Now, it would have been one thing if you got 50, 100 members of the Hall yeah. of Fame. You have one, and your number two said, nah. I'm not, like, are you serious? Yeah. And like even if this is supposed to be like some lead to some storyline or whatever, it's still just so it trashes. Still, yeah, it, it trashes the Hall of Fame. It makes Sting's induction induction just look pointless and yeah, meaningless, which everybody thought it was to begin with. Yeah. So they completely buried their <laughs> this, own this, Hall this of is fame. like the dumbest thing they could have done. Stupid, yeah. terrible. Yeah. I, I thought this was awful. Yeah. Uh, then we had another pretty good match actually. Uh, this match was um, ODB defending her knockout title against Gail Kim and Brooke. Um, this is actually a pretty fun match for just knockouts, whatever. It was, you know, it was all right. The the true highlight of this match was Taz on commentary. Oh my gosh. He had us cracking up. Man. The commentary on this was hysterical. Absolutely. Taz had, they actually had some really good jokes in this show. Yeah. Man. And the thing is about that was like, Tanay was like perfect in his role. Yeah. Like they bounced off each other. It was so fun. It was just hilarious. Uh, the match itself wasn't bad. Gail Kim took the greatest selling to a pounce ever. Like, oh, where, like, she's, like, standing there, and, like, Brooke comes out of nowhere, just rams her, and, like, she goes flying into oh, the ropes. Yeah. Funniest thing ever. The whole match was just funny, but fun. Yeah, it was fun, you know. Um, Brooke, when, when, when her O.D. beer going out, was a little awkward, but whatever, it was fine. Gail, Gail Kim, still criminally one of the best. Yeah, one of the best women's oh, wrestlers. Man. Especially, I mean, right now, going, she might be the best. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. Like her, I, I, you, you can make an argument for AJ, but Gil Kim's just like a whole other level. I'd say, oh yeah, you know? oh yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the finish came when uh, Lady Tampa, who's this new giant chick that they're trying to push as Beth Phoenix slash Amazing Kong, uh, who's not as good as either one of them, came out. ODB ran out there to attack her. She spine busted her or whatever on the stage, and then did a really cool spot where she took Brooke, Ho Brooke, and took her off the ramp and powerbombed her into the ring, which was a really cool spot. Right. And uh, Gail Kim with the win and becoming a new knockouts champion, and then uh, Tampa revealing that she's working for Gail Kim. So we get another. Swerve. We we get another uh, you know knockout, very talented knockout who's going to be uh, hampered by the fact that her bodyguard keeps interfering in her matches and helping her win when yeah. she could probably win by herself. So. Yep. 
Whatever. Uh, I give the match two stars. Uh, I, I'm going to give it two and a quarter. Okay. I thought it was pretty good. For okay. Uh, what do we have next? Oh, we had <laughs> the match tonight for a lot of people, actually. Oh, okay. Um, we had uh, Bobby Roode taking on Kurt Angle. Um, now, you probably remember like back in 2010, I think it was. No, 2011 was when they had their match at Bound for Glory, and a lot of people really liked it. It was like it was bad because of the finish. Well, this match was just as bad because of the finish. Um, they wrestled a pretty good technical match, I thought. It was just... A lot of people liked this match. I just could not get into the pacing. It was no, so I slow. I felt like it dragged. Yeah. Like, it felt like they were wrestling for like 30 minutes, and like they were like wrestling for 10. It just took forever. Yeah. It just felt like it was like this long, dragged out segment, then it got good for a very short time. Yeah. Like, when they were training submissional, it was fantastic. I really enjoyed like, that. Yeah. Especially like when Angle got the key lock in, like he was really ranging out. And also, I don't know what it was, maybe this is just me, but there were certain points like where Angle or Barbara were in the submission and they weren't selling it like they're in pain. They're just kind of like, like it was almost like a mild inconvenience. Right. Like, I felt like most of the selling during these matches, they weren't for like ankle lock selling. It yeah. was like sleeper hold selling. Yeah. Like, like you're about to like pass out. Yeah. Whereas in an ankle lock, you're in extreme pain. You're screaming your head off. Yeah. And, I don't know. I just yeah. didn't. I agree. I didn't like. The it's, yeah, it was just weird. And then they had this really weird spot where Kurt has an ankle lock and he grapevines it, so it's, he's really ripping on that ankle. Our roots crawling through it. It was actually a really good spot. And then it looks like he passes out. I'm like, oh, what is this? You know? Yeah. Referee does the hand check and like on the third one, it looks like he looks like the referee like, like put his arm on the rope. Now the commentator is trying to make it seem like, oh, Bobby Roode is playing possum. He's playing possum when his ankle is being broken, basically. Like, how is he not screaming his head off? That's the thing. You can't pretend to fall asleep when you are in agony. Yeah. So that made no sense. So I don't know what that was. And I've heard from live reports that the the alive crowd absolutely hates oh, that spot. Oh, you can hear Oh, yeah. They, you. you can hear them booing. But I, I guess that a, a large amount of people got up after that and left. I don't blame them. Um, so anyway, the finish came when Kurt Angle go... Goes up top, it delivers a uh, top rope angle slam. Both guys are down, referee gets a nine, Bob Roode gets up and stumbles, falls back, lands on Kurt Angle. One, two, three, Bob Roode wins by Kurt Angle knocking himself out with his own move. I'm sorry, that is the dumbest. That, that, that was terrible. I, I don't understand. Like, I've heard a lot of people that enjoy this, but that finish, but that, that, that took, on that top of everything else, that, that yeah. really hurt it yeah. bad. Now, and then the thing is, they still thought it was like a real thing on the thought, like, well, maybe Angle really did hurt himself. And then Kurt Angle does his classic, gets up and walks away refusing medical attention. It's like, well, then no point in doing that then. Right. And on your biggest show, yeah. Angle already did his, like, I don't want to be in the Hall of Fame thing. Yeah. I just feel like it was too much. There was no reason for it. Plus... Angle hits this monstrous move. Bobby Roode follows that monstrous move up with a pin yeah. and wins. Yeah, made no sense. And, and no, yeah. yeah. So once, if once Angle's it, not legit hurt. So once again, Bobby Roode wins by someone else, by uh, by the face, knocking themselves out with his own finisher. Mm. So I feel like I've seen that before. Uh, well, Sting did it, and then James Storm <laughs> super hit him out of the cage. Yeah. Okay, so then we had... Uh, Wait, we should rate that. Maybe. Oh, yeah, I'm fair. I give it three stars. Yeah, I'm gonna give that three. I'm, you know, I'm sure people liked it more, and good for you. But I just, you know, it had it had some good segments, but that pace and that finish didn't work for me. No, I agree completely. Um, next up, we had the long way debut of Ethan Carter the Third, who turns out, according to storyline, is Dixie Carter's nephew, which is like already I'm like I hate this guy already. Right. You know, there's and nowhere you can't go anywhere. Let me anymore. first say this right now. I went online and I said, "Oh, I'm like, like, why are they? Why are they such a big deal? This Derek Bateman guy is." WWE nobody that nobody remembers. People are like, oh, he's really good. He's funny. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I'm like, okay, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it will be good. You know what they had him face? Pretty Peter Avalon from PWG, who, and that made me pop more than Ethan Carter. Oh, definitely. Okay. And then they had a generic squash match on the biggest show of the year. The for thing TV. was, it wasn't just a squash, it wasn't a generic squash match. It, it was almost competitive. That yeah, a was little. the thing. Yeah. It was too competitive. Plus, this is your biggest show of the year, and your what third from the final match yeah. is a squash. Yeah, you gotta be kidding me. So idiotic. I, I cannot <laughs> just 
terrible. Absolutely. And, and Ethan Carter did not do that much to impress me, although he, he did have the Dean Ambrose finisher, which is like, okay, that's cool. Cool. And it's then, already been done, and yeah. it's being done. And, so. and freaking brained Peter Avalon on his head. What was his name? Like killed Norm him. Furman or whatever? Yeah, Norm something. Yeah, I don't know. whatever. Well, who cares? This match was a piece of shit. I give it, a, I give it like a, qu- half, a quarter of a star. Oh, you son of a bitch. That's what I'm giving it okay. to. Okay. And then we had another uh, wonderful match from TNA. We had Sting taking on uh, fellow Main Event Mafia member Magnus. And this match was hyped up as Sting was going to go out there and put and basically put Magnus on the map like Ric Flair did to him back at Clash of Champions all so long ago in a match that many consider one of the best matches uh, of Sting's career. And then, the best match yeah. of Sting's career. And Sting going out here proceeded to have one of the worst matches of his career. Terrible. This was awful. Sting comes out here, like doing the one thing you hate, his boots untucked. God damn. <laughs> Where, Why you, what do you do? Put your boots on first, then your tights? What is going on? How do your tights end up over your boots? I don't get it. <laughs> wear the t-shirt, which I hate so much. Unless, unless you are Kevin Steen, you should not be wearing a yeah, t-shirt. Yeah, but Kevin Steen at least cuts the damn sh- sleeves off. Exactly. And he, and, he, and he matches the pull-off awesome. Exactly. Yeah. Um... Sting proceeded to go in this match and look like a sack of potatoes, and Magnus went out there trying to his best to make Sting look competitive. Crowd did not give a shit about this match. They were cheering for Sting and booing Magnus, which is like exactly what you want to do when Magnus is your next big babyface, probably. This match should have never happened. This should have. This should have been on Impact. If this should have never happened. Okay. These guys are in the same state. I know. I know. It's so. Um, yeah, uh, and Sting proceeded to have like the worst um, sharpshooter ever. That made Dwayne the Rock Johnson looks like he was trying to poop. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like yeah. desperately trying to poop. It was disastrous. Yeah. And then Magnus puts him in the cloverleaf. Sting taps out. Uh, the fans were booing Magnus winning. And uh, oh, and then the best part of it is like Sting goes for the handshake and Magnus kind of brushes it off. It's like so they're probably gonna turn Magnus. They're you know I'd probably say the next big babies they had in the company probably gonna turn him heel. Yeah, which is surprised. fucking genius. You know Justin. Text me during this match and or after this match, yeah. and he said, "Wow, that was nightmarishly bad." Yeah. And that's pretty much it exactly. Is, I, right. I, I, it was a nightmare. I barely remember anything that happened in this match. I remember them like kind of like wrestling and doing stuff, but not really much. No, Sting needs bad. to fucking retire at this point in my, of Sting's career. I would say I don't want to see him versus Undertaker because that would just he get, can't be good. Yeah, he he would hold down the Undertaker. Yeah. It would so, be bad. What would you give this? <sighs> this is tough. I'll give it two. I'll give it really? two. I'll give it two. I think I'm being generous, but like, it, it had its moments where it was all right, and I did like kind of like Magnus stealing a little of Sting's move, so it was average. I'll give it that. I, I'll you know, and I'm probably being generous, but whatever. I'm gonna give it three quarters of a star. <laughs> I hated every second of it. I thought it was trash. Holy shit. I thought this was it. If it wasn't for the match before it, this would have been easily the worst match. Wow! Of the night. I thought I thought that that may be the biggest rating difference we've ever had in the show. That might be. I wow! Absolutely hated it. Whew! I need to I need to rewatch that match. I don't think you want to. Okay. Uh, and then we had the main event, which is a no disqualification match for the TNA World Title between champion Bully Ray and the Bound for Glory Series winner AJ. Um, this is a pretty good match for, at times, but here's the thing. So they started wrestling the match, and AJ was getting his shit chopped in badly. And then he locks in the cat and I'm like, all right, we're going to see a real match here. Garrett Bishop r- runs in. Five minutes into the yeah. match, we're having interference. I'm just like, this match is going to suck. Yeah. I, I, I gave up hope this match being good. Already checked out. Yeah, because you know that after five minutes, if Garrett Bischoff is running in, that's not the only shit that's about to go down. Yep. Um, so they did they did some stuff whatever they they teased the hammer shot which they both got not got down to the ring. Um, Nux ran out and choke slammed AJ. Yeah, like he he came in like three minutes after Garrett did. Yeah. And then the best part was like Bully Ray like got he, Bully Ray like actually ran into him. He rolls to the outside and just disappears. So I guess he got he took that one close and like well I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> and went to the back. And everybody yeah he just walked okay. Back. Um oh but, but, uh, we we forgot about this uh, before the match even started though. Bully Ray was in the back talking to what looked like he's, he's like the aces and eights were all back there and like you know oh yeah you everybody thought you left and yeah and so like I'm like oh they're gonna have like a big run in or whatever so keep that in mind 
Um, so they go on the outside, they're wrong. AJ does the fucking craziest spot I think I've ever seen him do. Just way beyond. Puts him on a, on a table, goes back in the ring. Table's about probably like seven feet away, probably, right? It was the announcer's table, yes. Yeah. Right next to the announcer's yeah, table. Yeah, probably like seven feet away. Does a springboard 450 to the outside. Bully Ray moves his. AJ barely catches that table and like does yeah. like almost. Looks like he nearly kills himself. Yeah. And I was just thinking to myself, Oh my god, AJ probably just fucking killed himself. And just like, I was like, what the fuck is he doing? Why Why would you do a 450? Right, of all things, that was crazy. Yeah. That was too much. It was the no, thing is, like, I'm not going to bitch because it was wild. It was like, awesome. I popped. Yeah. But I was scared. Don't fucking do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? I appreciate you doing the spot, but please don't ever do it again. Right, exactly. Because you nearly right. died. Um, and then the shenanigans really got out of the way. Bully Ray ripping up the mat again, like he did with Sting in the anniversary, and exposing the hardwood floor. Which I, I like that. I like that, how they picked, they put little pieces in. That was cool. I did like that. Um, Bully Ray signals for the rest of the group to come out. He thought, and out comes Dixie Carter. I'm just like, and there was an audible groan from the audience. Yeah, you could definitely tell. Oh, yeah. you wanted to see that. Um, the best part though was like, Dixie comes down empty-handed and she gets right like three feet away from bully and and she's like she looks over and she says give me that chair she gets the chair and hands it to bully you're telling me that bully couldn't have fucking taken three more steps and uh, got that chair himself yeah and uh so they, they, they have shenanigans uh you know oh aj had bully had covered earl hefner was going for the count dixie tell him not to do it he does the slowest two count ever you know and just, just drama 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 trying to build it and the uh, they proceeded to do crazy stuff, and uh, including a backdrop on those wooden boards, which had to hurt like a son of a bitch. Um, and then AJ wins with a style splash and a kind of un anticlimactic finish, I thought. Uh, yeah. And, um, yeah, Earl Hefner counts, and Dixie kind of stands there and, like, oh, you know, that tries to act. And uh, AJ leaves through the crowd, a la CM Punk. Kind of. Yeah, kind of, and not as good. Was his music playing? Yeah. Oh, well, no. let's, let's mention the music first of all. He comes out to that, um, that dark theme he had forever, and they never switched over to his uh, Get Ready to Fly song. Right. And, oh, yeah, and uh, uh, his theme song, the darker one, and Bully Ray's theme song are sang by the, sung by the same two guys. Same so guy. it sounds exactly the same. Yeah, so it's like Bully comes out and like, is this the same damn song? Right. So Justin thought that they were, that Bully was entering first. Yeah. Uh, this match had so much potential, and they did the one thing I knew they were going to do. They overbooked it. They filled it with shenanigans. The only thing they didn't do was have Hulk Hogan come out, which I'm thankful for. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, having Dixie stand there for, like, ten minutes and just, like, uh, you know, was great. Uh, I'll give this match a three. It was okay. it was good. But, and, oh, the best part was, like, the, the clip after the match showed every single spot of the match. Yeah. Every single yeah. spot. Pretty much all you had to do was watch the replay, and you'd, 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 you'd be like, "Okay, I, you just, it was a two-minute okay. two-minute clip, and I just watched the match. I'm done." Yeah, uh, not a good way to end your biggest show of the year. No, but well, it, it had the ending everyone wanted, but this match was not what it should have been. No, it wasn't. And the thing is, though, I feel I know that people are gonna be like, "Oh, you're getting down on TNA," so I feel like we should say some okay. good things yeah, I agree. about this. Is that this match had glimpses of. A fantastic match, yes. and the, the worst part for me was when Bischoff ran in because the first five minutes I was hyped. I was like, yeah. when they were doing the whole "You're afraid of me," and AJ stood up to him, and okay, like and Bully like just chopping his chest, and AJ's like, just bring it up, bring it up. And, and the thing, the best part was that his chest is like getting welted, yeah. And you're just like, this is unbelievable. Yeah. I love that, and I think when. AJ put on the calf killer to calfzilla. I was like, this is brilliant. Yeah. And Bully sold that. He was limping. I was yeah. like, this match is going to be so, so good. It might even be perfect for what they're going for. Exactly. And then they overbooked it and they killed it. And yeah. It really disappointed me. I agree. I was so upset. Yeah. I mean, these guys have had a good match before. I mean, they're, they're, um, their last man standing match from Bomb for Glow or Slamversary a few years ago is a great match. It's. Yeah. It's amazing, you know, and th this these guys have chemistry. They could wrestle together, but, you know, you can't have interference in the first five minutes of a match and expect me to like it. Right. And the thing is, like, if you're trying to turn aces and eights away from Bully, yeah. I feel like 
bullies should have been down there just screaming, come on, come on, and nobody yeah. came. And also, like, what was the whole thing with, like, him talking to the group, like, back, well, apparently they're talking to the group, like... Because Nux has been here the whole yeah. time. Bischoff never went anywhere. Yeah. What the hell so, is he talking about? Like, I, I was, I was kind of almost hoping that, like, they would, like, the camera would pan and you'd see, like, him talking to a mirror. Like, just, like, he's going crazy. Yeah, he's lost it. You know, that would have been something, at least. But it's like, what the hell was he doing? Like, he was just trying to fake out the crowd again? It was stupid. It made no sense. No. So, I don't know. I'm going to have to... Well, as far as my rating, I'm going to have to agree. I'm going to give it a three okay. because it had glimpses. Yes. When, when, they, when they got down to wrestling and just, you know, actually, and, like, not involving the interference, it was good. Yeah. It was just the interference that, and, you know, the shenanigans that made this match bad. Honestly, for me, though, well, I guess we can get in the, into this yeah. when we talk about the right. writing of our show, but I, it had a lot of a lot of things missing. Yeah. Uh, but, hey, okay, let's first say right now, though, this whole show, the guys wrestling were doing a pretty good job. It was the booking that killed this show. That's the thing. That's the sad part is that yeah. it wasn't the talent. It wasn't the guys out there busting their ass. No. It's the way that the, the, the situations that they were put in, they had no chance. Yeah, they were, they were, they were doomed from the start. And uh, that's kind of been the story from TNA for so long, is that, like, the guys can wrestle, but the people who book in the show don't know how to do it. Right. And uh, that's a shame, too. It, it really is. Uh, but, yeah, this ended up be, probably being... This might be my the worst show of the year for me, because it just was... I, I went into this match expecting some good stuff. It had a pretty good card. I'm like, well, you know, it's not the best card, but they can deliver. They can make this good. And they didn't. And especially for the biggest show of the year, your WrestleMania, you need to be doing... Bring out your big guns, and they didn't. We got the wrestler did. The the booker got the, the guys writing the stuff didn't. All right. I give it a, I give it, I give it a five it? out of ten, and I'm probably overrating it. But what was the what was your rating of Battleground? I think a four four something or whatever. So it's not the worst show. It, it, it it's not the worst show of the year, but it's like one I think had that made me the most pissed off because this was supposed to be the biggest show of the year. I agree. Um, I'm gonna go lower. Um, for me. The only saving grace for this show that made it that it wasn't the worst show of the year mm -hmm. was that the the main event had a finish and a title change. That's a good point. The only reason that I rated this what I did was because of those two things, yep. and I rated it a four point two five. Okay. Yep. Uh, so this might this might be our last teenage review ever because I don't I think I don't think either one of us going to really watch next year. I mean, what's the point? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we'll watch because we got we got a buddy that orders the shows anyway. So maybe we just go over there and watch it anyway. So, still, who knows? I still gotta pay him. That's true. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that wraps up for us, guys. Please do not buy this show. Go buy something better. Anything. Anything better. Take care. Bye.